Hi, Anthony Smith here, COO of EMF Safe. We are the American manufacturers of the UL listed EMF Safe Switch. Dan Everson, our CEO, is the inventor of the original EMF kill switch, the EMF sleep switch, and now in its present form, the EMF safe switch. This is a remote cutoff device for your home that allows you to switch off unwanted EMF, allowing you to create an EMF mitigated sleep sanctuary. We empower you to safely switch off and be in control of the EMF in your home. Welcome to the Experts Interview Series. Enjoy. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Nicole Chirac, MD, and uh, these initials after her name, I, IFMCP. And for those that, like me, weren't familiar with, with what those mean, it's the Institute for Functional Medicine uh, Certified Practitioner, and we can touch on that later. Dr. Nicole has a BS in Microbiology and Molecular Genetics from UCLA. She graduated with honors from uh, University of California Davis Medical School uh, before specializing in pediatrics at the Children's Hospital in Denver, Colorado. After her pediatric residency, uh, she returned home to El Dorado County to practice general pediatrics and begin her real training as a mother to her four children. As a parent of three, I completely relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true? Wow. Um, yeah. So with a, a decade of practice uh, under her belt, she became progressively dissatisfied with her conventional medicine, tr medical training and pharmaceutical heavy care plans. Um, and she was the third uh, pediatrician in the country to become certified in functional medicine through the Institute for Functional Medicine and now enjoys caring for both children and adults using her functional uh, medical training. And over the past 10 years, she's focused on holistic healing uh, of chronic diseases and has a special interest in recovering patients from uh, autoimmunity and neurological conditions. So, uh, Dr. Nicole, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for your time. I know it's very precious. And um, so 10 years of traditional medicine, uh, 10 years of uh, holistic, environmental, kind of more preventative. Um, that's a big switch. Tell us a yes. little bit about uh, about that. <laughs> well, as uh, you, you mentioned, I was progressively more frustrated with not really having tools to help my pediatric patients at the time with any kind of chronic conditions. But actually what catapulted me into functional medicine was that my husband was became ill and was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And uh, I think we were in our thirties oh. at that point. Um, I thought he was perfectly healthy. <laughs> That's how in tune I was at the point, you know, from my conventional training. And what I realized is that uh, he wasn't. And also I realized that conventional medicines um, approach to suppress the immune response it was not something that resonated with us. And uh, we started looking for the root causes. And I'm happy to say that it's 12 years later and he is uh, fully recovered. Um, I would say, you know, remission cured. I'm not sure what the word is there, <laughs> but um, you know, they were predicting that he would be wheelchair bound within five years because he had a progressive type. And right. um, as I went through that process, I learned about uh, what I believe is to be real, true medicine and identifying the underlying um, conditions in the body that gave him the autoimmune disease to his, to his nervous system. Yeah, Congratulations once, in, in uh, those results. That, that, that's amazing and, and does give a lot of people hope. Uh, so environmental, uh, holistic, environmental, preventative, environmental factors are all important. Um, chemical mold, there's all kinds of stress factors. Um, our conversation today, uh, I would like to kind of lean in the directions of how EMF in our environment, our homes and our environment, uh, are one of the contributing factors. Because it may come as a, a big surprise to many people that, that EMF is even on that list as an environmental yes. factor. How important uh, in your experience mm -hmm. would you say EMF is on those list of factors? Yeah, so um, probably number one or number two, 
And I, I, I alter those because I do think that if the nervous system is, is, has not had a trauma or any kind of traumatic experience or there's zero stress, it can tolerate a lot. But I think that EMF is probably number one in terms of um, something that's very important to make sure is not in the environment when we're trying to recover uh, any chronic condition in the body. The, what I'm realizing yeah. is that there's the direct effect of the current on the nervous system, but there is also the effect of the current on the microorganisms in the body. And, you know, in functional medicine, we really appreciate the microbiome and the importance of the microbiome. And the microbiome is what makes up all of our, um, it is the uh, bacteria, fungus, viruses, parasite. I mean, it's, it's a lot of different types of organisms. It's in our body that have metabolic functions that keep us healthy. And uh, when we, I, you know, I mentioned, or you mentioned that I have a degree in genetics and in the early uh, 2000, late nineties, we sequenced the genome and we thought, oh, we're going to find all these genes for the human being. And it's going to be so great. We're going to understand so much. And then we sequenced the genome and we found that we have fewer genes than a fruit fly. And we're like, wait a second, <laughs> we're really complicated. And how is it that we have so little genetic material that's active? Because, you know, the major, so many microorganisms in our body are act, metabolically active and a part of our, our, our health and our vitality. And when they're pulsed with electromagnetic fields, they get sick, they make toxins, they don't function. So there's a whole nother level of like, how that ends up in the body, but like inflammatory bowel disease um, or other, you know, food allergies, food sensitivities, um, chronic IBS or irritable bowel, diarrhea, constipation. We have, uh, I mean, there's so many cases that we experience as physicians where, you know, when we discovered the EMF exposure in the patient that, and removed it, that the patient recovered. And I think it's a really telling that no one who works in my office has not created a sleep sanctuary or has actually um, done the work in their own homes because we've witnessed <laughs> what a big player it is in our patients. Before we head off in that direction, it just occurs to me um, that some people may not know what EMF is. So uh, it's electromagnetic fields. Uh, which includes electric fields, which is every wire in your home, every device that's plugged in is putting out an, an electric field and it goes out six to eight feet in, the, in all directions and it goes through walls, floors and ceilings. So that's the electric field. Then you've got magnetic fields. Every time you've got a spinning motor, a hairdryer, um, and any, anything with a motor in it, a fan, uh, is throwing out a magnetic field. And uh, you get magnetic fields also off of um, uh, transmission lines and things like that, which can be quite devastating. And then uh, another aspect of this is radio frequency, which many people are familiar with as far as uh, radio television signals. And of course, today we've got cell phone signals, microwaves, which is very, very damaging. And an aspect of that is dirty electricity, which is kind of a factor of all of those. So, um, and also I should have said at the very beginning, we're not giving anybody medical advice. We're just having a, a friendly conversation here. And if you um, uh, need medical advice, you should, uh, uh, you know, call a doctor. We're, we're just um, sharing information here for educational purposes. So, yeah, um, so, so that being said, um, I said it may come as a surprise to, to a lot of people that, that electromagnetic fields are even on that list of, of factors. Then there's a group of people who are very familiar with microwave uh, from cell phone towers and things like that. Can you uh, address maybe in, in your experience, either the difference between the electric, the magnetic the radio frequency, or do you see them all as being equally impacting and accumulative and you can't just mm -hmm. take one out and address that and think that mm -hmm. you, you're dealing with it. My thoughts on that is that it's about the, the amount of exposure and what the body can handle. So, you know, it depends on what body is coming to this exposure and how it's already, where is its source of vitality and, and, and resilience. And then how much exposure of the electric or the, or the microwave or the magnetic fields that there are, because, um, and that is the bell curve, you know, the area under the curve 
which is how much time, but it's also how, how high and how intense. And so I think that, um, now I say this a lot, I'm not the house doctor, I'm the patient doctor. So I focus on the body and I see the effect. Um, and I definitely see an effect when it's removed. You know, the environment where we sleep is a very important environment because so we spend so much time in our beds. And um, if that area has an electric current or a magnetic field, that will definitely create chronic illness and also prevent recovery from chronic illness, even if you're doing all kinds of other things, because it's several, several hours. But if I was sitting maybe next to a, or blow dry my hair for 10 minutes, you know, twice a week, maybe that exposure is something that isn't, is more manageable, right. For my body and not something that, um, I need to maybe put the resources in to figure out how to do it differently. <laughs> I'm constantly asking right. that question because, you know, I, we take care of a lot of families and you know, you have three kids. We're busy. We have to figure out what's priority and where do the resources go? And I think hands down sleep sanctuary is the number one uh, thing that needs to be created as far as creating healthy house or healthy home environment and allow the nervous system right. to fully recover at night. The other thing that's happening at night too, is that um, it's when the brain detoxifies, you know, that we are just learning that the, that the nervous system and the brain has a lymphatic system of its own, that when you're sleeping and when you're in certain phases of sleep that are often disrupted by electric or magnetic or Wi-Fi. Um, your, your brain naturally kind of goes into like a detox mode and shrinks down and literally wrings itself out and lets go of all kinds of stuff that was accumulated during the day and during the exposure. And that's recovery. And if that's not happening, then the nervous system can't recover. So the, um, I think as far as importance, it's hard for me to separate out electric, magnetic. Why I think they're all bad players and um, creating a room or how much time you spend in, in that is very important. So the sleep sanctuary has a big return on your investment, meaning you put effort into creating a healthy environment and you have a strong return on that in your health and your vitality. As everybody knows, it's 24 hours in a day. But when it comes to, it's my understanding that when it comes to uh, EMF mitigation, we are, because of all the things that you've just mentioned, the things that are going on at night, we're actually, to all intents and purposes, 10 times more sensitive to mm -hmm. those factors at night. So if, if you are only going to mitigate for um, part of the day, that those nighttime hours, are, are you, you get a much, much bigger return. Absolutely. And there is... That, that is a time when, of course, we can turn off most things and, and reduce that, that electromagnetic field that we're exposed to. We may not have a whole lot of control when we're out and about at work and, and you know, shopping and, and get, doing our things outside, but we do have control over our home environment. And the, the one time that it's easiest to control those levels of EMF is at night, because that's when we really don't need that much on and uh what's fortunate is that 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 you get the biggest return um in the sleep sanctuary so i'm i'm, I'm glad it's interesting that you've um, you, you know you've, you've noticed that too yeah um, i've seen it clinically too even with little babies you know um this, there's this trend to do video monitoring of the babies and um we have seen Babies have food allergies, chronic eczema, colic, you know, and you just turn the monitor off, create the sleep sanctuary for the infant and it, everything dissolves. I mean, it's just, it's wow. really like, whoa, okay, that was really mediating all of that. But I think there's, I mean, and, and the awareness is improving, but we just want to keep increasing that awareness because we think, well, how cool is it that we can watch our baby on a video in the middle of the night while they're sleeping, but nobody's thinking about these devices and like how they, you know, the wearable devices or the, you know, the, the owlet that they put on the baby, uh, you know, to monitor their heart rate and pulse. Yeah. People don't realize because, uh, you know, we, we actually sell a little pen that uh, picks up electric fields and you get within two to three feet of a, of a, 
uh, a baby monitor, which of course you've got the electric field and then you've got the radio frequency as well. So you've got two things going on there, but you know, you, you come up to a toaster or a coffee pot and it goes beep, beep, beep. Um, and it lets you hear and see and be aware of the fields. And once people, it's like um, uh, the, the bio, you know, we, we um, everybody's aware of um, bacteria, but we don't worry about it. We wash our hands, we, we wipe down counters, we cook our food and life goes on. And I think we need to get to that level of awareness with EMF where we're learning to metaphorically wash our hands of EMF and just live our lives. And um, th there are many things, there's a lot of things we do not have control over in this world, but there's, right. there's actually lots of things that we do and we need to take advantage of those times. So every, every person situation is different, but you mentioned earlier, that you've, uh, you know, unless it was a, an actual stress event, that EMF is probably one of the most important things for people to get under control that they would see the, the, uh, the, the biggest results from. Yeah, so much so. I mean, there are some of uh, the physicians in, in our field that make it kind of a necessary thing before they'll even start treatment. Because if, if, if a patient is living in this exposure, uh, it's, it's, um, you could throw the kitchen sink at, at the condition with medications and lifestyle modifications and things that, and, and have very little, um, recovery. Wow. So all of the other things that you can help people with. So we, we actually call it, um, we, <laughs> the, the elephant in the room. So, yes. uh, lots yes. of people, are, are that nobody you know, can see and nobody knows is in there. <laughs> yeah. The E of EMF. Uh, the yeah. E of EMF is the elephant in the room is the electric field. And uh, it's actually one of the easiest things for us to fix and, and, and to take care of. One, one story I'm reminded of is, uh, you know, during the power outages last year or the year before in California, people with uh, spectrum children having a week without EMF. They noticed a dramatic improvement. We actually sold a, an EMF safe switch to a family. They had a, a, a five year old autistic child. And the child hadn't spoken um, at all for five years. And within one week of um, getting a sleep sanctuary and having you know, those eight hours, I mean, they were still exposed to electricity during the day, but at night they had a sleep sanctuary. And within one week, that child started talking. I mean, that's- Yes, it's incredible. Why, why we, we do, do what that, we do. That's like one of our very beginning steps in our recovery program is we ask our patients to, to do a, a hack so to speak, of their of their home and their environment by turning off the power um, when they're sleeping. I think it's great if you could do it 24 hours, but that's not normally reality. <laughs> we do need these things that are powered um, and see how, and uh, I don't think I actually know anyone where they didn't notice it. You know, like it's, it's, a, it's really um, a powerful intervention and, and people feel better, but they don't know that they don't feel good from it because they're constantly in it until you take it and you turn it all the way off, you know, which right. you know, yeah. I think that's very important. Um, and so if anybody is, is wondering, I think that's a great way to start, you know, turning off the power uh, to your bedroom when you're sleeping and also putting all of your devices and your Wi-Fi off. And Absolutely. You sleep. I yeah, noticed it, that when I first did this, I, for my own body, like I, I never used to notice that I was in an electric field or, or in Wi-Fi. Um, but then once you start living out of it, then you sense it when you go in it, you know? So I was at someone's house and I thought they had the, it all turned off, but I could feel it in the body when I was trying to go to sleep. And so I got up and asked, is this still on? Oh, I forgot to turn it off. And I'm like, yep, I can tell. And I knew the moment it turned off, I could feel it in my, in my body. So you can develop that intelligence again and being aware of it when you don't live in it all the time. But when the exposure is all the time, we just adjust. That's yeah. People, uh, you know, they go to the beach and they feel better and, and they don't, they, they attribute that to the fresh air, uh, the, the, you know, the sound of the waves, all of which are wonderful things, but they don't never equate to the lack of EMF in that environment. Uh, we live not too far from the redwoods and, um, mm you know, um, going to the redwoods, A, they shield the EMF, but also go hug a tree and, and how much better do you feel? I mean, literally yes. and, and physiologically, it, there's actually a lot um, of benefit to that, of grounding out our bodies 
act as antennas and they also act as capacitors, which means they will actually hold electricity. So getting uh, going out into the garden, getting your bare feet on the in the dirt, you know, uh, getting your hands in, you know, doing some gardening, um, that sort of thing. And, and people do feel better, but they don't equate it to the lack of EMF and, and getting rid of all of that uh, toxic um, energy. Now, you do energy work in your practice. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, <laughs> Lots of different uh, types. Um, frequency specific uh, microcurrent. microcurrent. Now, yeah. now, that is EMF. So yes. not all EMF. And this is something I wanted to bring up, especially with yeah. you, because um, not all EMF is bad. Right. Some of it can be very healing. Some frequencies ah. are very beneficial and, and, and can be used for healing, whereas other frequencies are extremely extremely Harmful. damaging so maybe, yeah, maybe you could address that yeah so you know we're taught that in medicine too everything at the right dose can be either or the wrong dose you know can either be a medicine or a toxin and um and that's really important you know antioxidants everybody thinks oh antioxidants are so good for you right but what they are they're actually poisons that stimulate your body <laughs> to create an oxidative response that to heal and, and your makes your body make the antioxidants. So um, this is a frequency specific microcurrent is basically like uh, what I would consider homeopathic dosing of an, of a magnetic field or electric, depending on how you're using the machine, but, um, and everything in nature has a frequency and those frequencies have are known um, and, and are becoming known as we um, explore them. But you can use those frequencies therapeutically in the body. You know, probably one of the most, uh, I mean, and we use a lot of brain recovery um, frequencies. There's a frequency for nerve, there's a frequency for myelin, there's a frequency for your vagus. Um, and we, when you pair the frequencies, you, it sends, um, the current in that frequency and it resonates with the that frequency in that cell and basically through resonate resonation i don't know if that's the right word um it it stimulates that in the person's body so it's it's pretty incredible we also use it to treat chronic infections like viruses like you know shingles is a really common one it works amazing for shingles um, but it's not specific, it's very specific current. It's for a specific amount of time. You know, we would never want to live in that frequency that then it would become a poison. So those specific frequencies are uh, causing a, uh, a, a positive harmonic and a positive response. Yes. They're actually feeding energy to, mm -hmm. to that particular, um, you know, thing within the body. Um, yes. So the, the, some of these man-made frequencies cause a, uh, a, a disharmony so yes. they can actually that that vibration that frequency can actually not support the body but actually mm -hmm. cause it to break down and I think at a cellular level and I know especially with the biome which 80 90 percent of our health comes from the biome in our digestive systems they are even more sensitive from mm -hmm. my understanding is more sensitive to EMF than, than our own um, genome is but um that there are certain frequencies, man-made frequencies, that will actually cause a, a um, disharmony and cause certain functions and to, to break down. And so maybe people can relate to it in, in those respects and think of sound. Absolutely. Um, sound. I mean, I think like, yeah, or we're just going to say we're having like an epidemic of nervous system conditions, mental health conditions, you know, depression, anxiety, um, ADHD, these are diagnoses that are just really skyrocketed in the country. And I know there's several players to that, but our microbiome is very intimately related to our mental health or to our brain health. And these frequencies um, are either going to um, support a healthy microbiome or harm. And at the dose that they are in the homes and in, the, in, the, in what we're seeing with the dirty electricity and the magnetic fields and, um, and the Wi-Fi, I mean, those are all harmful. They're like a million times stronger than what we would use for a healing frequency in the FSM. So as a doctor who has seen probably 
thousands of patients. Um, and unfortunately, most of the people that are, are coming to see you already are sick. They have a problem. Mm -hmm. And now you've, uh, the last 10 years of, of your medical practice, you're leaning more towards the preventative. What um, piece of advice could you uh, give to those people that are listening um, so that they don't have to come and see you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I mean, that's, that's such a global question, but, and I uh, sure. do say that everything is individualized in, in real practice of medicine, but EMF is global. So, um, living in it where you live and your home and the health of that home is either going to support you in your recovery and your vitality, or it's going to prevent you from recovering. And I, so many of the patients are living in electric fields, they don't know it, um, or they have magnetic, even worse, magnetic situations in their bedroom <laughs> where they're in that magnetic field all, all night. Um, we've had patients who've been pretty sick, who've had power lines that were under their house that did, they didn't know, you know, that their home was in a magnetic field from a power line or, um, or the Wi-Fi. So what I would say is, um, investigate that. I think you need to have somebody come test the home most of the time because you need to know what, where these fields are. I mean, it, they're, they're invisible, the elephant in the living room that you mm -hmm. cannot see and, and having the testing so that we know exactly what is needed so we can do the right um, individualized recovery of that space um, is what I would recommend. I would recommend that everyone have uh, a, a building biologist uh, check their home. And we do, I mean, that's what we do with our patients. In fact, it's expensive to see the doctor and it's, it's even more expensive to see uh, functional or integrative physicians because we don't usually are not part of the system. So if somebody can mediate that EMF, then you see what's next. And a lot of times there's such significant recovery just with that step alone. For those that are listening to the experts interview series, and then maybe this is your first um, interview, uh, check out the others. Four, four of the other interviews I've already done are with uh, building biologists and EMF consultants. Uh, some of them have been in the business for uh, 20, 30 years and uh, have some very expensive equipment. They have a lot of knowledge. They know what to look for. And having somebody to like that to come out, just like you would go to a doctor and get a diagnosis, you can have a house doctor come out and diagnose your home, which is what building biologists do. And you know, if you are in an area where you can't, uh, maybe there isn't anybody there. I spoke to somebody yesterday and they, they didn't have anybody within two or three hours and they weren't willing to make the drive um, mm -hmm. at this particular time. So we do have a, a body voltage meter and at least you can find out which circuits in your bedroom are affecting you. And people think maybe there's only one, but you know, there can be five or six hidden wires going somewhere else in the house that all need Absolutely. to be turned off to create a sleep sanctuary environment. A lot of the sick building issues um, have to do with the microbiome of the home. And, and EMF is very much a piece of that because mold um, and other probable organisms grow in homes, especially when they aren't ventilating well. And a lot of our buildings, you know, they're not really built the way they used to be and they don't ventilate very right. well. So often families or um, patients are getting sick from the toxins that are being made by that mold. And when they studied that um, and they looked at mold growing um, in a building with zero EMF exposure, and then they looked at mold growing in a build in a home with with uh, conventional regular EMF exposure. The toxins increased six hundred fold every hour because the mold that's getting wow. exposed to these yes, the mold that's being exposed to the EMF in the house wow. is it's a threat to that mold. And so, I mean, what the mold does is it makes toxin because it's, it, it seems like something's trying to kill me. You know, this, this dirty electric current is trying to kill me. The Wi-Fi is trying to kill me. And so it makes more and more toxin. And that all that toxin is in the house. It has to be navigated, you know, through our bodies. And um, when it can't get through, uh, it makes us sick. So mold toxin illness is a very common um, condition that we see in integrative and functional medicine. And EMF is a huge, I mean, even if you can't get out of a moldy house, you can stop the current 
going to the mold that's in the house, which will help not only your body and your microbiome, but also your home's microbiome be less, less toxic, less toxin producing. Well, I love learning something new and I didn't know that. Um, it's a little depressing that the mold in our homes is more intelligent than we are. <laughs> No, I know, right? <laughs> and, and is doing something about this condition that many of us are not doing ourselves, but the mold is. It's kind of like <laughs> it's trying. It's spitting out toxin. <laughs> so the toxin's wow. not killing the EMF. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just killing the people living in the house. Yeah. Smart yeah, that's mold. a really big player. Because you know, we have we see a lot of uh, mold illness in our practice too. And and uh, sometimes patients cannot get out of that home. I mean, it's, you know, it's their house. Sure. They can fix it. It can be really expensive. So I, I do think EMF is still number one, um, 600 times more toxin an hour in the current compared to not in the current. That's, that was, that was the study that they did. It's really impressive. Wow. So in summary, what, I, what I'm hearing you say through, throughout this interview, and again, thank you very much for your time, which I know is very precious, that if there's um, obviously without sitting down and diagnosing somebody and looking at their chart and everything, just for the people listening as a, as a piece of uh, not medical advice, but uh, friendly information, uh, EMF would probably for, except obviously there's unusual, bizarre situations like, you know, living close to a toxic dump or something. But for 99% for of the people out there, uh, the, the number one thing, your advice as, as uh, 20 years of medical practice would be to create a sleep sanctuary. Would that be fair enough mm -hmm. to say? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and turn off the Wi-Fi. Yes. Well, yeah. one thing we recommend people do once they measure the bedroom, mm -hmm. even if they're a game room, uh, you know, the TV with smart TV with the Bluetooth um, to include that circuit into turning when you turn off the circuits oh, at night, yeah. even though there may not be a direct effect from electric fields because that wire is not running through your bedroom, mm -hmm. but to include that in the switch off so that we have like four zones that you can do and you you turn off the the game That's room brilliant. with the smart tv and the wi-fi mm -hmm. or, or the home office and so you are again adding to the uh significantly increasing the the, the reduction of not just the electric field nice thing is when you turn off the circuits uh you're killing the electric field and the magnetic field and the dirty electricity and any radio frequency that is associated with with any of those circuits so it's a uh, and that is uh, again something there's two approaches one is to uh you know leave the house on and turn off the bedroom at night uh the other holistic approach which many people are beginning to do now is they actually keep their house turned off and then with the zone system, they actually only turn on that part of the house, which they're going to go into when they need to be there. So their overall background during the day, during the daytime, their overall level is greatly reduced. And, and just from the mold point of view alone, just yeah. to have the overall level down all mm -hmm. the time uh, could, could be a, a great way maybe to uh, recoup and recover in uh, if somebody unfortunately finds themselves in a situation like that. So I'd like to ask everybody to uh, click the like button, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so more people can uh, get us up in the algorithm and more people can benefit from hearing this uh, wonderful uh, 20 years of experience from, uh, from Dr. Nicole. Thank you, Dr. Nicole, for sharing. Absolutely, and, my pleasure. Uh, we, we, we appreciate uh, your time and being willing to share and, and help everybody with, with, with all the things that you've learned. Thank you for having me. This is such an important uh, piece of the puzzle of, of our health and our vitality in this time. And I just think the more people who understand it and know it and, it, and can empower them to take care of themselves and to be the best them that they can be. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.